Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Sorry. It's Sue Fuller here at South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church on Monday, August 22nd, 2022. I can't believe it's the end of the month already. We're just getting... Oh, there's Gordy. He was probably looking to see, like, where's Sue? I'm running a little bit late this morning because I... Um, I had a lot of things that I needed to update everybody on, and I wanted to make sure that in my little notebook where I write everything down, um, I had all the latest updates as much as I possibly could to share with you all. And um, so I apologize for being a few minutes late this morning, but I'm here. We're here. I had the tablet needed to be charged. So the angle's kind of weird today, but I have it plugged in and balanced just so on the music stand, and um, it's kind of one of those mornings, but I hope that you're all doing well, and I'm really glad that you have come this morning, and just to spend this time with all of us praying and going through some of the things that are going on in our church family. Um, I hope that you were able to be with us in person for worship yesterday. Um, Linda Mori brought us the message. Um, if you haven't got a chance to see it or you weren't watching the streaming on, on Facebook Live, you can go back on the app or the Facebook page or the website or lots of YouTube, lots of different ways that you can check out the service yesterday. But the Youth Praise Team sang. It was a great um, morning to, to see them up there leading us in worship. So if you didn't get a chance to check it out, I'd really like you to do that. Um, Next Sunday morning, we're going to have a special time during the worship service to be praying for our kids, for our little kids, for our teenagers, for those that are teachers and those that work in the schools. Just a really special time of prayer, um, a sneak peek. Our dear Mary wrote something special for the morning for the kids, and um, it's just going to be a really, really great time. So I want to encourage you to bring your kids, bring your grandkids. Um, if you yourself are a teacher, please don't hesitate to come on Sunday because it'll be a really special time, not just this blanket prayer, but we want to be praying for specific things for the kids and, and adults. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think, um, I think it was one of those God ideas. And so whenever those are the things that come to mind, usually something special is going to happen. So I really hope that you guys, um, know about that and tell your families remind them this week it'll be in the blast and um, other information as the week goes on but I'm really excited about that next Sunday because most of the kids some kids are starting back already most of the kids will start next week either Monday or Tuesday so we want to just send them with um, their church family's blessing let's go into our joys and concerns this morning I have quite a few some of them I have some updates there's a few new ones um, if I don't have an update from you and you are watching and just want to type it in the in the message line or the the chat line during this time this morning or even later um, if you if you're watching this not live in the morning um, don't hesitate to put things that we can be praying for of course that other people have if you're praying asking prayers for somebody else make sure it's okay with them before it goes on Facebook but um, We'd be glad to just to continue to look back at this morning's devotion and just um, look for some updates on there. So the first one I want to mention is um, Paul Craft. We've been praying for Paul for a long time. Stephanie had a chance to get um, go on vacation for a couple of weeks, so we had a couple of weeks without uh, Stephanie's smile greeting us at the door. Um, but Paul and the family. They've, they've decided that they're going to move towards more palliative hospice care for Paul. And it's quite a transition for that family. Paul is still pretty young. I think he's early 60s. And um, it's just a, it's a real hard time for that family. And so, of course, we want to be praying for Paul um, just in no pain and that just a real peace with him but also for the family that that has to make so many of these decisions there was I was driving here from the house this morning and I kind of I made myself laugh because I was thinking but my very first thing that I thought of this morning when I got up out of bed was I don't really like adulting 
<laughs> and um, there's so many things about being adults, so many hard decisions we have to make. Of course, I was saying it about something light, like taking Patrick to work at six o'clock this morning. But for things like Stephanie, um, you know, she's really young still too, just in her 20s, having to make some of these decisions with her family. And so let's just be praying for the Kraft family. Um, we have a friend in our church who is traveling to Cleveland today to have some back surgery. Actually, she might have gone there yesterday, but we want to be praying for that back surgery, just that the Lord goes before her, that, um, that the doctors and the nurses and everybody who cares for her, that there'll be no complications, and that she will find some relief. So let's be praying for that back surgery today. Um, I don't have an update on Danny Luffler, Jim and Chris Luffler's daughter-in-law, but we need to be continuing to pray for her. Um, she was going to be having some radiation, and she would have to be in isolation from her kids. Um, so we just need to be praying for Danny. We also, I talked to Brenda yesterday about their cousin Lynn. She's going to be having surgery coming up soon. They haven't I don't believe they've scheduled it yet, but she has a really positive attitude about it. Um, it's for a tumor that is non-cancerous, but is just wreaking havoc with her whole her whole system. But she's had uh, a few scary complications and where she's having a hard time breathing, and so they um, they're going to be moving up that surgery pretty soon here. So let's be praying for Lynn. I got a message last night from Rob Crosby, and he asked us to be praying for. Um, a classmate of his actually her husband graduated with Rob and and Katie was a year behind but they've just found out that she has breast cancer and they caught it in an early stage but it's in a very aggressive form so she's going to be starting chemo right away um, so let's be praying for Katie as she's um, going to be going for this journey um, just that God would be there with her we know he's with her but that she would feel his presence with her now I see Sally on today. I haven't heard anything this morning, but last week Lucas started his um, his chemo and just some medications in preparation for him to have his bone marrow transplant. And he developed a really bad rash and his blood pressure dropped and they moved him to ICU and he was in ICU for two days. Um, I believe he's out of ICU now. Uh, but we just need to be praying for that whole family. Just, um, you know, this is just the beginning of a lot of these treatments and things for him. And we just need to be praying um, for encouragement that the Lord would just be there, give them peace, give them present. We pray for little Lucas that he doesn't have any more reactions. Pray for Sally and the um, Scott and Zachary and the rest of the family that's not able to be in Pittsburgh with them and be that support for Tabitha, that present support for Tabitha and so we just need to be praying for that whole family it kind of got off to a rough start but we pray that um, things are going to go a lot smoother um, yesterday in church I spoke with Lori Woolslayer who is a really good friend with Tabitha and that's kind of how the Woolslayers Tom and Lori kind of got connected to South Harbor Creek was through Tabitha Sally you know how those kind of things go but um and Lori and Tabitha are really good friends, and she's going to help us to kind of find ways that we can support the family. Maybe we can help with some financial things, maybe through gift cards. Um, but she's going to be kind of the point person for that. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have, um, I have to wait until Pastor Tim comes back so I can make sure, you know, you'd have to pass things through the pastor, of course. Um, which I know that he'll be he'll be fine with, but um, give Lori a chance to kind of give us an update at church on how they're doing and kind of be that face for the family um, that we can be praying for them better. So I was really really pleased um, for that connection yesterday. <clears throat> we need to be praying for Mel Naylor. I mentioned him a couple weeks ago. He was going to have some surgery and some stints put in something that. He tends to need to have pretty regularly and that all went well he's doing fine um, I really had a nice nice talk with him yesterday before church started um, if you uh, don't know Mel you need to get to know him and talk with him a little bit he's such a kind sweet man um, but he's gonna be doing some traveling at the end of this week he's gonna be going to Michigan and then I believe Kansas um, 
but he's going to be traveling and he's going to be as far as i understood he's going to be driving and so we need to be praying for him for just safety when he travels that he's able to um, just really have a good time he's going to be visiting some family um, but let's be praying for mel naylor i got an update from marilyn last night um, last week she had an appointment with the oncologist on thursday and her red blood count and her platelets were dangerously low really not good and so they sent her right to the hospital immediately and she got some transfusions um, she's having blood work today so we need to be praying for her today and then she's supposed to start chemo again on the 29th um, and then on top of all of this because that wasn't exciting enough poor thing has a dental infection in her mouth and so we just we need to be praying harder for Marilyn um, you know praying for all the things there's not a praying harder not harder I'm just kind of kidding about it but um, we do need to be diligent about praying for Marilyn um, she's obviously a, a huge part of our church family and we love her and um, you know a lot of these things we talk about on Monday mornings and I'm sure a lot of you have your pens and you, you write some of these prayer concerns down um, a couple weeks ago Jim Luffler, when he was um, preaching, he talked a little bit about fasting. And we haven't done a whole lot of talk at our church. I really didn't know much about fasting until I was an adult and, and had, actually, I was in Russia and did some reading on it um, and understanding a little bit better about it. But I want to challenge all of us this week, including myself, to take um, one time that we would normally have a meal. That's, of course, if you're not a diabetic or something that you can't skip a meal. But during that time that you would normally have a meal, set it aside, go someplace quiet, and pray for not only the things that are going on in our lives, but also the things that are going on in our church family's live, lives. And just really spend that time with prayer. So it's not a mandate, but it's a suggestion. Maybe this week we can um, really concentrate on praying for some of these things, for, for breakthroughs for some things, for healing for some things. But um, I just kind of want to challenge you with that. So let's be praying for Marilyn um, and all the things that are going on, just that things get better for her soon. Um, little Lowen, who we've been praying for, I think I mentioned last week, she broke her arm. Um, they're kind of checking it, obviously, regularly. They're hoping that the bone will heal on its own so they're not going to have to do surgery because then with her there's so many complications with that as well so let's be praying specifically that Lowen's arm the bones in her arm heal without surgery so that she doesn't have to be going through that again we want to be praying for our college kids I talked to Paul D'Angelo walking little Paul younger Paul walking into church yesterday and um, he starts classes I believe today so Penn State must be starting up Jacob Schaffstall's going back to school also at Penn State Nick is going to Kent State it's his first week of school Scott and Leanne had posted some pictures of Nick moving into the dorm also their daughter Amelia just got a new job and just moved to a new area and she's getting settling settled in and so here's Scott and Leanne now, empty nesters and all that means for them. So let's be praying for all of our college kids, all of the parents who are dropping their kids off. I know Victoria heads back soon. Um, Emmy went back to Grove City a couple weeks ago. You know, um, Odessa and Kaylee are going to be starting soon. A lot of our recent graduates are going to be going for the first time. So let's be praying for them praying for them that God would just go with them, that they will have opportunities to um, grow and meet new people, but that they will always um, be reminded and put first their relationship with Jesus. So we have um, someone in our church family who's waiting for some biop biopsy results. We need to be praying for them. The results are in, but they weren't able to make an appointment to meet with the doctor until Friday. So it's kind of a waiting time this week for them. Um, there's also some family struggles that they're kind of going through. Um, and we just need to be lifting lifting that family up in prayer. Um, Liz Dulesky, is her sister had hip replacement surgery, and so she's out of town helping her. You know, Liz is another one, too. She's just this constant presence in our church, just um, willing to help out, willing to do willing to just love on and hug and 
be compassionate. And she's a real gem in our church, and she's been huge in my life and in the youth's, youth's lives and in my, my family with my parents. And, and God has just given her the spiritual gift of helps. And um, so we just want to be praying for Liz as she's um, using her spiritual gift with her family this, this couple weeks. Um, Tim and Nancy are going to be coming back this week. We're going to pray for smooth travels. I'm not sure if it was today or tomorrow. I think it's today they're going to be coming home um, from wherever. And they've been in Germany, of course, but I think they're in the States already. But they're going to be coming back up here. And so we just want to be praying for them as they readjust, get back in the office and all the things. It's hard to readjust after vacation. So we need to be, um, we're thankful that he's coming back and we're um, just praying for a good day for him today. We want to be praying for Phil's sister, Pam. Um, Penny and I talked last week. I didn't get a chance. I see you on here, Penny, to, um, to get an update this week. But let's, she has cancer and it's a reoccurrence of cancer, I believe. And um, just it's hard to see people that you love and you care about going through stuff like this. So let's be praying for um, Phil's sister. I didn't get an update. I saw jo yes Joanne yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to ask her how her daughter Brenda's doing. But she was having some issues with her eyes. Um, so let's continue to pray for her, for Brenda. Um, Scott Askins asked us a couple weeks ago, but I think to continue to pray for his mom. She um, has shingles and just a lot of severe pain with that. She's not the first person. There's a couple people that I've heard of recently who have shingles, not from a whole range of age, um, ages. So we need to be praying for her. I also don't have an update on Robin's friend, Eddie, but I know we should be continuing to pray for him. Um, we need to continue to pray for Johnny, um, who's a young mom in, um, in Harbor Creek, who is in hospice, um, and just for her family um, right now, every day. That's another one that's on my heart. Every time she comes to mind, I just stop and pray. Um, and also continue prayers for Ken Workman, that's David, um, da my friend, Dave, my family, David and Tanya from Russia, it's David's dad, um, that he's going through um, cancer treatments and chemo. We need to be continuing to pray for him. So there's probably a lot more that I, of course, didn't mention, but there's grace in that. And you all have been so gracious to me when I forget to do something or I give an update that's a little off. Um, Thank goodness God knows all the, all the details about it, but he just wants us to be praying for our families and our friends in this way. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the rain. Lord, last night um, watching the sky light up with the, with the lightning and, and just the amazement of your power and your glory and your beauty and how you have created this earth to work in such miraculous ways we give you thanks lord we thank you that you are not a god who is so far off and and doesn't want to know us and just wants us to be in fear of you and and keep separate from us that but that you love us so much that you gave jesus to come to earth so that we would have an understanding of you in a way that those in the Old Testament might not have ever understood about you. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice that he has made on the cross for us. Father, that's why we're here. That's why we're here praying today. This is why we're doing this Facebook Live, is because we know you, Jesus, and we have this relationship with you and we know that you've called us to prayer to communication with you and to lay before you the things that are on our hearts to lift one another up in prayer to praise you for your goodness and your love and your mercy for us father for all the things that we mentioned this morning for those that are um, struggling with their treatments i think of poor marilyn going through all this stuff with her health with the chemo and her red blood cells, Lord, we pray that you will touch her body right now, that you will let her blood work show good things so that she can continue on with her treatment. Um, Lord, we don't know all the details about all these things, but we know that you love Marilyn, that you are with her, 
that you are her provider and that you will care for her and be with her everything every time she goes through anything lord that's the truth for all of us but we are praying specifically right now that you would just give her your supernatural peace for whatever today holds whatever goes before her this week lord for um, the kids little lucas in the hospital for tabitha and scott and zachary and sally and their whole family we lift them up to you right now for your peace for your care for them lord we hate to see suffering and so lord we're praying specifically that lucas um, doesn't suffer anymore with this rash or low blood pressure or that that you would just remove his fear that you would um, reveal yourself to him um, in a in a way that maybe he's never seen you or felt you before maybe he doesn't even recognize that it's you but lord we pray for your um, your peace and your calm um, for that whole family and also for healing for little lucas Lord, for those that are waiting for biopsy results, for those that um, are having new beginnings this week, going to school, going to college for the first time, um, whether it's Pastor Tim coming back and starting, starting um, looking forward to the fall and all the things that you have in store for us this next year. Lord, we just pray that we through all the things that we're going through, that we keep our eyes on you. I pray a special blessing on our kids, especially those that are going to college this week. Father, that you would keep them close to you, that you would remind them of your love and your care for them, that they wouldn't put you aside as they go through this transition into adulthood, but Lord, that you would be present, that you would bring Christian friends into their lives, that you would bring um, good influences, that you would help them find a, if they go away to school, that you would help them find a church that they can be rooted in. That if they're staying here, that they're able to continue to be rooted in our church here. But Father, so many things that I mentioned today, Paul Kraft and the family and so many families that are going through decisions about hospice and palliative. And, and yeah. Lord, we thank you that we have not just the hope of heaven, but we have the promise, the guarantee of eternity with you for those who know you and believe in you and have that relationship with you so lord i just pray that you would be with all those families that um, are maybe going through grief right now the recent grief of a lost of a loved one or someone who is going through that transition with hospice i lift up johnny to you father there's so many things that are on our hearts lord Phil, Sister Pam, I could just go through that whole list again, and I don't need to, but Lord, you've heard our prayers today. You know the things on our hearts. Father, help us this week as we move ahead and we go ahead with, with all these things that, that have come to mind this morning, that you would help us be deliberate um, about praying throughout the week for these things. Maybe it means during a lunchtime, maybe in the morning when we have our coffee and we spend that, that time with you, that we specifically pray for the things that are going on that you have laid on our hearts, that you have put in the path before us to be lifting up and to you in prayer. Father, we give you this week. We pray that you will go before us, lead us in the directions that we should go. Father, be with us as we pray the prayer together that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks, friends. You know, sometimes I think on Monday mornings when we have our prayer time, and why do I end with the Lord's Prayer? There's something about that moment when we're praying in unison. I hope you're, well, it doesn't really matter if you're praying out loud or not, but if you're praying the Lord's Prayer together, it somehow connects us in a really special way. So I, that's why I continue to do it every week. But we love you. If there's anything we can be praying for, please let us know. Um, have a really, really great week, friends. We love you.